No. Was the greatest detail in the Quran, and it wasn't that detailed in the other prophets. Yes. Yeah, because it is, it is very important. Nuh is the first Rasul. Good. Brilliant. And he's he the very first messenger. And he is one of the only Azams. Yes, he is the first messenger. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But also the Quran is the final updated yeah. version of everything. The whole complete story is in there, which yeah. has gone missing in the previous books as they got corrupted up. Do you understand? So the last book has got everything in it, full detail, complete story, to complete the whole religions. Islam, remember, is the last religion. It completes all the religions. Yes. If Islam has the complete story, does that mean that uh, it's, it's been not complete Bible or Torah is not? Yes, complete. bits are missing because the Bible we know got corrupted over time. Mm -hmm. Torah we know was already uh, being was missing before, wasn't it? When when Jesus came, he said, "Stop taking things out of the Torah." Okay. Right. So let us start off the story with Adam. Okay, Adam and Islam. We've already done Adam's story, it's on my YouTube channel. Which son of Adam was born after Habil's murder and continued his legacy? Sheep. Good, well done, I think you're going to get the gold medal. <laughs> Sheep, who is Seth in the Bible. He continued his legacy afterwards. He couldn't choose Gabin. Gabin had murdered his brother. He wasn't going to use a murderer, was he? He used his third son, Seth, and, at, and he, from an early age, prepared him. So he showed him how to make tools, and Seth actually built Babylon. Okay? He built Babylon with his hands and all of uh, his brothers and sisters. And then, when Adam al Islam was on his deathbed, he called Seth to him and he said, you are now going to be my successor and you are going to carry on the message of worshipping one God. Okay? He also taught him the hours of the day along with the appropriate acts of worship. And guess what? Why am I mentioning Seth? He said, a flood is going to come on the bad people. And you have to make sure you, everybody worships one God. We don't want the flood to come while you are alive, he said. So be careful, our son, he said. Make sure everybody's worshiping one God, okay? And he told him that a flood will be coming. And he said, just keep telling everybody to worship one God and nothing else, okay? And then, he passed away. Okay? And Seth, he did a very good job, Sheaf, he did a very, very good job, except as the generations went forward, what happened? What happened after five generations? Come on, everyone, what always happens? Fifth generation of Sheaf. After five generations went, what started happening to the world? They started worshipping more than one God. Good. Can I say she, she they traveled? Yes. Okay. He was. Okay. She, after five generations after him, people started worshipping gods again, different gods. Okay? So I just said, comes which prophet comes next? Yes? Abraham. No. Is it Idris? Idris. Idris is next. Five generations later. Idris comes along. He is called Enoch in the Bible. Yeah. In Arabic. Yes. Good. Well done. So, but also in the Quran is written as Idris. Idris. Okay. Idris was the next prophet. By this time, idol worshiping had actually cracked in. Okay. And he was a really good prophet. He brought everybody towards worshipping one God. He worked really hard. And he was the first prophet, did you know, to um, write. He was educated and he used to write quotes to bring everybody onto the mind path. Okay? And he carried on the mission. 
He instructed people to pray and <coughs> fast on certain days. He also instructed them to pay a portion of their wealth to the poor as well. Okay? And he was the first to invent writing. <laughs> And mention in the book Idris, indeed he was a man of truth and a prophet, and we raised him to a high station. How do we know he was raised to a high station? It's written in Surah Maryam 1956-57. How do we know he reached a high station? Who met him? No, somebody met him at a high station. Prophet Muhammad. Yes, Prophet Muhammad when he went to the Miraj. Miraj. Good, we're getting there. Okay? <laughs> we're getting there. Prophet Muhammad when he went up, he actually met him on the fourth heaven. And that's what we mean by being raised into a high station. Okay? And it says in Bukhari, and lo, Idris was there. He welcomed me and prayed for my well being. Okay? So that is very, very important. This shows that he was elevated by Allah because he worked so hard. Okay? Right, listen carefully. Which prophet then came after him? and preached Allah's message for 900 years to make life easier for some of you I put up multiple choice there Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman no, 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 sorry okay. there you go Prophet Nuh Islam was the next prophet let's have a look at our chart he came 10 generations later after Adam Islam. Okay? And he was the great 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 grandchild of Idris. So he came from the same lineage and he came in Babylon area, which was built by Sheath. Okay? And he was the first messenger. Okay? All messengers are prophets, but not all prophets are messengers. A messenger is a special prophet which brings messengers, messages directly from Allah. He was the very first messenger. Okay? And um, he was given uh, guidance by Allah. And this is what Prophet Muhammad said about him. Abu Huraira narrated that Prophet Muhammad said, On the day of judgment, the people will come to Noah and say, Oh Noah, you are the first of the messengers sent to earth. And God called you a thankful slave. Okay, that's the Bukhari. Right, more questions. Watch the screen, everybody. How many prophets are mentioned in the Quran? 25. 25, well done. And Hazrat Nuh Islam is one of the blessed prophets who is mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. How many times? Does anybody know the number? Impossible. Impossible. Sorry, this question? How many times is Prophet Nuh mentioned in the Quran? 14. That's a really good guess. I am very, very impressed with that answer. 43 times is mentioned. That is a brilliant answer. Well done. Okay, and how many surahs are there in the Quran that have titles named after different prophets? There's a more than I think that. Six. Six is the correct answer. Okay, it's between you and the sister who is asking the questions. Six. Well done. Now, why have I put that up? Because Nuh son is one of the blessed prophets who has a chapter named after. Okay? And did you know his story is mentioned in ten chapters in the Quran? Al Araf, Yunus Hud, Al Ambiya, Al Muminun. Ashwara, Al Ankabud, Al Safat, Al Qamar, and Nur. Okay? Right, now, what was the situation of the people when Hazrat Nur al Islam came? Why was he sent? 
and why was he the first messenger? What do you think had happened by the time ten generations passed? There were worshipping different gods. Yes, was it a lot? Yeah. A lot more. A lot more than in the time. Okay? It was really, really bad. Okay? So listen to this. There were three pious people called Wad, Snua, and Nasser, and they were names of pious people who lived between Adam and Noah. Okay? And the people of this nation, they really respected these pious people a lot. Okay? And Shaitan thought, let me crush that people. Okay? So Allah had forbidden the worship of anyone but Allah. So Shaitan started tempting them. He said, you know these people that have died, let me help them to recover from their mourning. Okay? So he, he dressed up as a person and he went to the graveyard at where all these people were mourning these three pious people who died. And he said, you know what? You know what? Let me make a picture of them and you can remember what they look like. <coughs> they said, oh, that's a good idea. That's good. Let's have a picture and then we'll remember them. So that's what he did. And then he said, you know what? A picture can go with the rain, it will get washed away. Why don't I make a statue for you all? Then you remember him, he'll be there forever. That's a good idea, they said. So Shaitan made a statue for them in the places where they used to sit. And then later on he said, I'll make one for all your arms as well. I'll put a statue in your mouth and you remember him. Yeah. Okay? So then they put the statue. He made a statue of all their houses as well, put them in there, okay? And then he said, let me make a statue for you where you sit as well. And all the places where you gather to pray is just remembering those three bad, those three good people said. It will encourage you to worship whenever you remember them. And you know what you can call the statues? Wad, Seba and Nas. Okay? And what happened was after these people died, the next two generations didn't realize why those people were there, those statues were there. So Shaitan said, you know what? You know your parents and your great-grandparents and your grandparents, they used to pray to those people. So then what happened was Shaitan got even worse. He said, you know what? You know your parents used to pray to these statues. Every time they prayed, they sent rain to you. And they sent provision to you and food to you. Okay? And they believed it because their parents were not allowed to tell them, no, no, don't worship them. They were just there to remind us of those two people. So, that's exactly what happened. The later generations did not even know why they had been erected, which the main reason was to keep the memories alive of these three people. They only knew their parents had prayed for them, and the knowledge of what these statues were created for was lost. Okay? So this is how then Shaitan made them do idol worship. And not only that, he also said, kiss them, he said, and sacrifice animals to them, and they'll give you rain. It was a really, really bad ship. So they started sacrificing animals to them and giving them food to eat as well. What does that remind you of? Hinduism. Hinduism. Shik is Hinduism. Paganism. Okay? And that's how idol worshipping started. Not only that, because they had no understanding of Allah, <coughs> there was no one to punish them. They were not answerable to anybody, just these statues, they started doing evil deeds. They became evil, cruel, and immoral, and unjust. Okay? So, the names of the idols formerly belonged to some pious men of the people of Noah, and when they died, Shaitan inspired their people to prepare and place idols at the places where they used to sit, and to call those idols by their names. The people did so, but the idols were not worshipped, Till those people who initiated them had died, and the origin of the idols had become obscure. Whereupon people began worshipping them. That is in Bukhari, so I'm using the things as well. When 
righteous man among them dies, they build a place of worship over his grave. Then they depicted those images therein. They are the worst of creatures before Allah. That's in Bukhari 427, Muslim 520. Okay? This picture is beautiful actually because it shows everything that happened the graves, the lighting of the fires, the sacrifice, <coughs> then praying to the idols and the big temples. Okay? Right, so do you think it was time for Allah to send Nuh al Islam? Yeah. Definitely. Okay? So, this must have displeased Allah, so He sent the Prophet Nuh to guide them to the right path with His message to His people and warn His people. Noah, did you know, was very intelligent and he was the only person alive at the time that was not doing shirk. Even his dad was doing shirk. And he said, I'm not doing it, dad. And his dad took the mink out of him and bullied him. Why he wasn't the same as everybody else. Okay? And Prophet Noah was an old man. He was pious. He was sincere, truthful and trustworthy. This is why he was chosen by Allah. And he was a people amongst them, from the <coughs> other nations, okay? And Prophet Noah invited everybody to worship the one true God, Allah, okay? And guess what? He was an excellent speaker as well. Excellent speaker and very, very patient. You'll find out how patient he is in a minute, okay? Let's listen to the ayah. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَى قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ And indeed he said Noah to his people and he said, Oh my people, worship Allah alone. You have no other God but Him. Will you not then fear Him? Al-Mu'minu 23-23. So he used it, it, first of all, he used nice ways to bring them to the religion. He told them about the beauty of Allah. Look how majestic he is. So that they'll think, oh yeah, there is somebody else apart from these silly statues that we are uh, uh, worshipping. So guess what, because he was so intelligent, he talked to them about science. And he used nice ways to get the people to listen to him. He said, look, Allah's made the world. He's made the sun and the moon and the stars up there, the skies and the heavens. And look at how everything is revolving in night and day. Actually, even the conversation is in the ground of what he said to the people. Look how modern this talk is. <laughs> Okay, Surah Noon 71, 30 to 60. Let's look at what that says. What is the matter with you, he said, that you are not in awe of the majesty of Allah when he truly created you in stages of development? This is talking about you when you're in your, your, your mother's wombs, even in those days. Do you not see how Allah created seven heavens, one above the other? placing the moon within them as a reflected light and the sun as a radiant lamp. And he told them even more things, even in those days. Can you believe it? So much intelligence. How do you think the people reacted? Maybe it Right. So what does it say in the Quran with each and every prophet this happened? Right. But what? Words are used in the Quran. They asked for the science. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. He's mad. He's mad. He's insane. Why do you want to listen to him for? They mocked him. It's in the Quran he mentions mocked. With all the prophets. And how many a prophet we sent among the former peoples, but they would not come to them a prophet except that they used to ridicule him. Okay? And uh, so let's look at what they did to him now. 
فقال الملأ الذين كفروا من قومه ما هذا إلا بشر مثلكم بشر مثلكم يريد أن يتفضل عليكم ولو شاء Let's have a look at those horrible people. 
So the rich people turned against Noah and they tried to harm him. They said, you are only a man like us who wants to be better than us. If your God wanted to say anything, he would have said it to the rich first and he would have chosen angels to come down and tell us. Only poor and weak people follow you. If this is a true religion, it would not come to you. It would have come to the rich before it would come to the poor. Why don't you drive away the poor, he said. Drive them away. Then we may think about it. Okay? And Prophet, uh, Prophet Nuhal Islam said, I'm not going to do that. The little bit of believers I've got, I'm going to drive them away as well. This is not a king's door, he said. So, let's have a look at the comments. <laughs> Thank you. 
they got sick of it and they said, right, if there is, if yours is the true religion, bring down that disaster you keep threatening us with. Let's see it then. Where is it then? Yeah, because they said he was a liar, didn't they? So they said, oh Noah, you have disputed with us and much have you prolonged the dispute with us. Now bring upon us what you threaten us with, if you are of the truthful. He said, only Allah will bring the punishment to you, if he will, and then you will escape not. And my advice will not profit you, even if I wish to give you counsel. If Allah's will is to keep you straight, he is your Lord, and to him you shall return. That's in the book. Chapter 11, verses 32 to 34. So then, Prophet uh, Nuh al-Islam then goes to Allah and prays to him. He's sad, but he's very, very angry because the people have refused to listen to him. He prayed to Allah for help. <laughs> Okay, he cried, oh my Lord, verily, I have called my people night and day, secretly and openly to accept the doctrine of Islamic monotheism, which is the belief in one God. But my calls only made them run further away. Very. Every time I called unto them that you might forgive them, they thrust their fingers into their ears, covered themselves up with their garments, and persist in denial and act very arrogantly. That's actually mentioned in Surah Nun, chapter 71, verses 5 to 7. Okay? So do you think Allah's going to listen to his prayer? Yes, you're all nodding yes. وأوحي إلى نوح أنه لن يؤمن من قومك إلا من قد آمن فلا تبتئس بما كانوا يفعلون. And it was revealed to Noah, no more of your people will believe in you except those who have already believed. So grieve no longer at the mysteries. That's in Surah verse 36. Okay? Mm -hmm. This was comfort and consolation in a way from Allah. Okay? And then Prophet Nuh al-Islam did his own dua. He was angry. <laughs> Inspiration and address 
be not on behalf of those who did wrong. They are surely to be drowned. That's Surah Bud, chapter 11, verse 37. Okay? And so Prophet Nuh now started building a huge ark with the help of all his believers. Okay? And he chose a place outside the city and far away from the sea to build his ark. Okay? And it was actually built in cubits. A cubit is an ancient unit of length. It is based on the forearm length from the tip of the middle finger to um, the elbow, bottom of the elbow. That is a cubit. Okay? And did you know that the Egyptians, they also built the pyramids using cubit measurement. That is an ancient measurement. Okay? And I put that up for a reason to give you an idea of how big that ark was. So if you look at that picture and, that, and just think of how you know the, the measurement is, and it's a man's measurement of a man's hand. And then we look at our ark, okay? And let us look at the measurements. So it was 300 cubits in length. <coughs> It was 30 cubits in height. Its width was 300 cubits. And each deck was 10 cubits. Okay? <coughs> Why is there so much detail even when it comes down to the measurements of the ark in Islam? Who's clever enough to get this one? Yes. I think because to show how huge it is, because he put in it all the animals. Okay. A pair of animals. But there's of another people. reason. Why the exact measurements? Why do we need to know? Allah could have said it's huge. That's fine. Uh, were the same measures used, used in future? No. Let's look at the future. The future is your clue. What's going to happen in the future, everybody? Everyone, everyone will draw. <laughs> Let's look at modern day times in the last 10 years. Hint, hint. Did they find it? Good, you got it. Excellent. We found the York. And guess what? The measurements were the same as in Islam. And did you know the week that Ark was found, how many people reverted to Islam? Islam is a true religion, it's got the exact measurements. Okay? Now we were going to come to that again in the future. Okay? So they so found the ark. Can I repeat it? Can I repeat this? Why, can why? I repeat it? Why are the measurements there? Yes. They found the ark in the last 10 years. It was on the news, everybody. Yes, yes. BBC News, they found the ark. I'm sorry, where was it found? I'm not going to tell you. We've got to get to that bit of the story. <laughs> but in that week, there was a huge reversion to Islam. And it was after 9-11. Okay. I shall tell you later. Okay, be patient like no others. Okay? So, this is why. Okay? This is why the measurements are there. It was a three story deck ship. The bottom deck was kept for animals and cattle. The middle deck was kept for humans in there. Okay? And the upper deck was for all the birds, right at the top, okay? Its bow was curved so that it could sail through the water. It was made out of wood and it was painted inside and out with tar to keep the water out, to make it waterproof. This is how much <coughs> detail we've got everybody, okay? So amazing. Right. When all the horrible people saw that, what he's doing, what do you think happened then? They ridiculed him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is he doing? They mocked and they laughed at him while he was building the ark, making comments about the ship's location, far from being even near the water. The disbelieving had no comprehension of the power and magnificence of Allah. So they could not understand why Noah would build a ship on the top of a hill far away from the ocean. They called him crazy and laughed out loud. How can there be a flood coming when 
when there's not even the sea nearby. For the you remember your lungs in the play. <laughs> Where's the water? Where's the water? I can't see the water anywhere. <laughs> so my daughter in that play I mentioned earlier said those words. <coughs> and you know what they said? You're laughing at us now, but soon we're going to be laughing at you while you're still laughing. Okay? So let's have a look at that exact iron. So, um, 
the terrible day had arrived. He saw water coming out of his oven and he thought, right, let's go, everyone. Let's get on with it. What was the first thing that Allah ordered him to do to put in the ark? Yes? A pair of every Good, a pair of every animal. Good. He ordered uh, Noah to bring along a male and a female of every kind of living creature. Okay? And all the animals were gathered in pairs and led aboard. And guess what? Amazingly, the animals came running. They wanted to go in the ark. They all went in them themselves, okay? And uh, one by one, some had wings, some had legs, some crawled, <coughs> some hopped. They all came on the ark. The rabbits ran races. <coughs> Let's see if we get on board first, they said to each other. We want to get on first. We want to get on first, okay? And do you know what's amazing? When they got in, the lions didn't eat up the sheep. Amazing. And the big dangerous animals were all tame. And they quietly sat down smiling and mixed with all the other animals. Amazing. That's from Allah, isn't it? Okay? Right. <coughs> Boat, 
Titanic drop, okay? Hands like this. And what does it do, brother? You're going to tell us. Because we can <coughs> break the Doha. Shall I recite it? Uh, I've got the recitation here, but you just tell us you read the Doha. The travel Doha, I guess. The suffer Doha. We're going to start the goal, we're going to start it in our last name. Okay? So let's listen <coughs> to that Doha again. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقٍ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقٍ وَاجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَصِيرًا And say, my Lord, lead me in with the truth and lead me out with the truth and grant me strength to help me, he said to That's in Al-Isra 17.80 and then he did the dua. Just before leaving, have a look at the picture, what's going on in the sky. وَقَالَ رَبُّهُ فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرَاهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا إِنَّ رَبِّي لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And he said, embark in it in the name of Allah. It will sell and cast anchor. Surely my Lord is all forgiving, most merciful. Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 41. And as he said it, what was happening in the sky? All the clouds were gathering really thick black, black clouds. This is in an area where it never rained. It never rained in that area of Babylon. Okay? And at that stage, he said to his son, Please, quick, get on the ark. Look, look, look. Look at the sky. Get on the ark quickly. And his stupid son, who makes me angry, get on or Yam, he refused to climb on board. He climbed onto a high mountain and he said, thought that the water cannot reach him here. So Prophet Nuh said, only people who listen to Allah can find protection. <laughs> Okay, chapter 54, 
or verse 12. And then slowly, slowly, as the fountains overflowed, they then went into the sea. Okay. And water came out instead of lava. 
And what it says in the Quran is that the water from above and the water from below met together. That's what happened. Okay? He said, Oh Noah, surely he is 
not of your family, Mary. His work is unrighteous, so ask not of me that of which you have no knowledge. I admonish you, lest you be one of ignorance. Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 45 to 46. So can you see here, he's actually, Allah gets angry with him for even asking him. He gets angry with him for even asking him. Okay. قال رب إني أعوذ بك أن أسألك ما ليس لي به علم وإلا تغفر لي وترحمني أكن من الخاسرين. Noah understood. He said, Oh my Lord, I seek refuge with you for from asking from you that of which I have no knowledge. And unless you forgive me and have mercy on me, I would indeed be one of the losers. Again, chapter uh, Hud, Surah Hud, 47. So, he quickly asked for forgiveness there when he realized he had done wrong. Okay? That is a very important ayah, actually, I feel, for the people uh, whose families are divided because of religion. You always get like one or two people that are religious and the others are not. And this is actually a very good... I are really to put in front of them, especially if you're following the rest of your family. But it's not good to do that. Okay? Right. When the two waters met, the whole world was covered completely. Okay? The was very angry. The violent tremors on the ocean floor caused flooding of the whole planet. The rain was hammering on the roof and there was also great wind to go with that as well. It roared all around. The ark went from sailing amidst the waves and the thunder rolled and the lightning flashed from the angry skies. Everyone on board was very, very frightened. But Prophet Noah kept praying to Allah for his mercy at this great moment of the last thing that was destroyed was, who knows what the last thing that was destroyed in that flood? Anybody? The Kaaba. The Kaaba was the last thing that was destroyed. And you know that stone which Adam and Aslam brought down, that then went on to a mountain. It flew off and went on a mountain. Okay? Which is found then later on, isn't it? By Ibrahim and Islam, and he comes along years later. Okay? But they rejected him. So we saved him and those with him in the ark and drowned those who rejected our signs. They were certainly a blind people. And I still am. Okay? al Araf chapter 7 verse 64. Okay? So that's basically everybody has gone now, dead. All the bad people. The only people living now are the people on the ark. The good people only. Which we know is just a handful. Okay? So has Allah completed his mission? All the bad people are all dead. Yeah. And only the good people, which is a handful, are left on the ark, are now alive. Has Allah completed his mission? Yes. yes. His mission is complete. He's got rid of all the bad and he's made a clean world, which he has cleansed with water. Okay? So now the water dries up, the sun comes out. <coughs> Okay? 
So let's have a look how it all changed. So the ark was in a big flood and now all of a sudden it's sailing nicely. The wind has stopped as well and the level of the water has gone down and when they looked above the clouds have parted to let the sun through. All of this is in great detail in the leaves and in the ground. Okay? Now when the water goes down from the mountains, is the ark going to stay on the water? No. No, where's it going to go? On the mountain. Okay? So here is the ark. Now it's on the mountain because the water has gone down. Okay? And the mountain peaks now can be seen and they are showing above the water and the ark gets caught up on the peak of which mountain? Aisha. Mount Judy. Mount Judy. That is the most important word, did you know? Because in the Bible it says Ararat. Okay? <coughs> Mount Judy is written in the Quran. And uh, who was it who said, it was you, I think, wasn't it, brother, who said that lake from the ark is found? And guess which mountain it was on? Mount Judy. Okay, in Turkey. And then all of a sudden everyone became Muslim that week. Well, there were loads of people who became Muslim that week because it opposed the Bible. Okay? That was in Turkey. <laughs> An article published by The Observer states that the Noah's Ark has been found. And what's interesting here is that the Quran and the Bible give two distinct accounts of the location of the Ark. And as we noticed, the Quran was correct and the Bible was wrong. Uh, the, the article here states, Noah's Ark has been found on the Turkish-Iranian border, 32 kilometers from Mount Ararat, according to the leader of a team of scientists that has been investigating the site for six years. The Turkish government is so convinced by the findings that after years of intransigence, it has designated the site one of special archaeological interest and agreed to its excavation next summer. The remote site contains a buried ship-like object resting an altitude of 2300 meters. At 170 meters long and 45 meters wide, it conforms almost exactly to the 300 cubit by 50 cubit boat that God told Noah to build according to Genesis 6 in the Bible. On surrounding terrain, the American and Middle Eastern scientists have identified huge stones with holes, with holes carved at one end, which they believe are drogue stones, dragged behind ships in the ancient world to stabilize them. Radar soundings indicate unusual levels of iron oxide distribution. Saleh Bayrak Tutan Head of Geology at Turkey's Atat Ataturk University estimates the edge of the vessel at more than 100,000 years. Estimates the age of the vessel at more than 100,000 years. And he quotes as saying, it is a man-made structure and for sure it is Noah's Ark, end quote. The site is directly below the mountain of Al-Judi, named in the Quran as the Ark's resting place. And I'll mention this first after. David Fazold, an American shipwreck specialist with no religious affiliation, has led the investigation. He says subsurface radar surveys of the site has produced, quote, 
very good pictures, end quote. And he continues saying, the radar imagery at about 25 meters down from the stern is so clear that you can count the floorboards between the walls, end quote. He believes the team has found the fossilized remains of the upper deck and that the original reed substructure has disappeared, but the findings have infuriated the scores of Christian Ark hunters who travel to Turkey convinced the Ark will only be found on Mount Ararat. Fazold, who also calls himself an archaeologist, also argues that it was not a great flood that pushed the Ark into the mountains. He says it was an astronomy astronomical event causing a tectonic upheaval, a tidal bore causing gravitational pull in the ocean waters that forced the boat into the mountains." End quote. Some of Fazold's teams of geophysicists and geologists are reserving final judgment until the excavation and carbon dating, but in a British TV series on the environment next month, team member Vendel Jones, a Middle East archaeologist and inspiration for film character Indiana Jones, says it is quote, between maybe and probably, end quote, that they have found Noah's Ark. Uh, the Quranic verse, so that's the end of the article, the Quranic verse detailing about the resting place of the Noah's Ark is found in chapter Hud, uh, verse 44. The verse says, And it was said, O earth, swallow up your water, and O sky, withhold your rain. And the water was diminished, meaning made to subside, and the decree of Allah was fulfilled. The destruction of the people of Nuh or Noah السلام, and it, the ship rested on Mount Judi and it was said away with the people who are the Dhalimun, the polytheists and the wrongdoers. So just the point of evidence that it rested, the Quran says specifically that it rested on Mount Judi. The 49th verse of the same chapter says this is the news of the unseen which we reveal unto you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May the peace and blessings be upon him. Neither you nor your people knew them before this, so be patient. Surely the good end is for the muttaqun, meaning the pious. Duty, whereas the Bible says in Genesis 8:4, then the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. And this is in the New King James Version, Genesis 8, uh, verse 4. And the, the pictures you are now seeing are just pictures from the website, uh, fatwa-online.com. The link to this article and the pictures will be posted under the more information section to the right of this video. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashiru an la ilaha 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 And guess what? What did I say to you about the measurements? I've got the measurements of the ark, and when they measured this ark, it was the same. That's how they knew it was the same ark. Remember I said to you, we've got great detail in our religion because of what is to come. Okay? So that's a photograph of that ark that was found, and it was actually quite recently. I remember watching the news. 9-11 had already happened, and that was found. Okay? Right. Um, and did you know it actually tells you in the Quran about sign will come. Let's listen. <laughs> And those 
those with him in the ark and made them successors and drowned those who rejected our son. See then what was the end of those who had been warned. That's in Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 73. And it, there's no mention in the Islamic story of Noah sending doves to see if the, work of the land is dry. The reason is, Allah told him you're safe to come out now. So the doves is not in the Islamic story. Okay, so all the people and animals who had been on the ship happily came out. Noah released all the animals, the birds and the insects, and they scattered all over the earth. And Noah and his family, the believers, disembarked, whereupon Noah touched his head to the ground in prostration. The first thing he did when he got off, he prostrated to Allah and he said, Alhamdulillah, thank you for saving me. The animals were led to safety and they were there to inherit the earth. Noah and his followers, they all thanked Allah and Hazrat Noah al-Islam to save him. What else did all the followers do that day? Maharam is your biggest clue. What did they do that day when they got off the boat? They fasted. You all know that we fast, don't we, on the 9th and the 10th and the 10th and 11th. And that's the day when the ark landed and also that's the day when Musa has come to the sea. I will put the date up in a minute. قيل يا نوح اهبط بسلام منا وبركات عليك وعلى أمم من من معك. Oh Noah, come down from the ship with peace from us and blessings on you and on the people who are with you and on some of their offspring. Okay, and. Fasting on the day of Ashura was mandatory for Muslims until Allah declared fasting in Ramadan compulsory. Okay, so this is very um, important that it's the same day when Musa was also part of the sea. And this is why we originally fasted there on that day. It was compulsory until Ramadan came later. Okay, right. Is Noah's mission now complete? Please think carefully before you answer this question. Is his mission complete? I don't think so. No, because he still, he still has to warn you. <laughs> I think it is complete. It's though. complete! Yeah. The disbelievers are all dead. Yeah. There's only good people on the earth. They've seen a massive miracle in front of them. They're all believers. They're not going to forget that for a while, are they? Okay? Noah's mission is complete. He's already been preaching for 950 years, everybody. He's an old man. Okay? So <coughs> as soon as he got off the boat and he made all the animals go to all their right places and they pledged and they prayed, shukr alhamdulillah, and he fasted, he said, I have to go now, everybody. I'm not feeling well. Okay? Same as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as soon as he completed his hajj, he got that kill. Okay? So, on his deathbed, he got all his sons together and he said, Look, sons, you've got to tell everybody to worship just the one God. Never ever let anybody do shirk again after this. Okay? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the death of the Messenger of God, Noah, approached, he admonished his sons. Indeed, I would give you for reaching advice, commanding you to do two things and warning you against doing two things as well. I charge you to believe that there is no God but Allah and that if the seven heavens and the seven earths were put on one side of the scale and the words there is no God but Allah were put on the other, the latter would outweigh the former. I warn you against associating partners with Allah and against pride. Okay? So uh, that is Sayyid Bukhari. So at this point, the Quran stops all narrations about Hazrat al Islam. And we know that he passed away after this. He warned his sons, okay? And um, the survivors, they kindled a fire and sat around it. And they contemplated about 
everything. Okay, what had happened? They were prohibited uh, to not use any of the ship's wood to burn up because we know that that is a sign for later to come. And they hadn't eaten for ages. And it was those three sons from which then the whole world came about. Okay? And made his descendants the sole survivors as Safar. Okay? Noah's prejudice to endure the earth, he did not grant children to any of the other believers who were saved with Noah. So did you know that all human lineage goes to Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. From the progeny of Japheth came Turks, Gog and Magog, Yajuj and Majuj that we covered in the last lecture. From Ham came Sudanese, Berbers, Africans and Pots. And from Shem came Arabs, Persians, Romans, and Greeks. Okay? All from his believing sons came the whole world was made again. Okay? And from all the animals is where we get all the animals today. They were repopulated by the earth in the earth. Okay? This story was in the Torah and in the Bible, but we've already explained the Quran had the full story. And this book here is the detailed um, translation of the Quran, the explanation by Ibn Kathir, okay? And the story of the prophets by Ibn Kathir is the best book for you to look at, to see the detailed story, okay? I'm now going to finish off with a poem. Normally I finish off with a video, but I have got a brilliant poem which I am going to read to you. So let's listen. This is a summary of what everything I told you today. Okay? Ten generations after Adam passed away, idol worship grew. To stop the spread of evil shook, Allah sent the prophet. <laughs> The police had misled people to worship pious dead men like Wad. They bowed to graves made statues and took them as their gods. Living for 950 years, Nu preached in many ways. But with fingers in their ears, the pagans cheered and told him to go away. The chiefs said Nu was mad followed only by the weak and poor. But when they threatened to stone him, Nu could take no more. Don't leave on earth any disbelievers to Allah pray Prophet Nu. They would misguide and raise more, so it was better to start anew. Nu was told to build a big boat, an ark made of nails and wood. Allah guided Nu as he built it and he made it strong and good. Joking the ark was far from the seas, the pagans giggled in laughter. Nu said their fun would soon end and turn into sadness after. A disbeliever would bring his son so he would poke fun at Nu, recalling as a kid his own father used to make fun of Nu too. The pagans dared Nu bring Allah's doom, joking about the flood. Stormy waves would soon draw, drown them, washing away their evil blood. Nu began to fill the arks with animals in pairs of male and female, with only about 80 believers aboard the ark got ready to sail. Nu would soon board the ark while saying Bismillah was best. With Allah's protection, the boat would float smooth and finally rest. Water gushed from cracks in the ground, ovens and places of fire. The skies overflowed with rain and the waves got higher and higher. <laughs> Nu asked his son Ginan to leave evil disbelief and climb aboard. 
saying nothing could save except Allah's mercy as the rain poured. New Sun didn't listen and climbed a higher, a higher mountain, feeling all secure. But huge waves crashed into Kenan, sweeping him to his death for sure. Nu asked Allah to forgive his son, saying he was a family member. Allah said not to treat him as one, as Allah he chose not to remember. Even though Nu was a prophet, his wife and son didn't believe. Nu felt sad but was told for disbelievers he should not grieve. They floated in the ark for many months in a world wet and moody, <coughs> until Allah told Earth to dry up its waters and landed on Mount <laughs> Allah blessed peace upon the ark's crew. Faith had kept them alive. They fasted and prayed to Allah on land. Thankfully, they had survived. Nu advised his three sons, Ham, Japheth, and Shem, before he died saying, Worship Allah without shirk and warmed about Dajjal and pride. The believers and animals spread new life across the earth once again. Now when we see ships, we think of Nu's ark carrying life in the rain. Brilliant, isn't it? Right. Um, now let's look at the morals from this story quickly. What morals are there in this story? Pop your hands up, please. What morals can you think of? You do not cross Allah because at the end of the day, He will make you suffer uh, in this life. So I'm um, assuming basically what goes around comes around. Right, okay. What's the very first message that is in this story? The biggest one. Suffer and patience. Okay, suffer and patience. In the end, you will succeed, yes? You've missed the biggest one, don't you? Right. Thank you. <coughs> shirk. Okay. Now, a lot of people think shirk is just worshipping other idols. It isn't just that. What's my favourite word, everybody? Innovation. No. Priscilla, what's my favourite word? Paganism. Paganism. We think we're not doing it. We're doing all of it. Okay. I know New Year's Day, people were celebrating New Year's. Yet it's a pagan festival. We know it is. Okay, we know it is. I've done many, many lectures on this. Christmas, Valentine's Day, all of these things are pagan festivals linked with other gods. I can name the gods. Easter is one of them. Okay, January is a god. Yeah, they're all linked with these festivals, and us Muslims are celebrating these pagan festivals which are linked with other gods. So indirectly you are associating partners to Allah. Okay? And that is shirk everybody. Okay? So it isn't just being a Hindu, or we're not Hindu, we don't bow down to these gods. I'm sorry, all of these things are classed as shirk. And that is the only thing that will never, never, ever be forgiven ever. Okay? Hellfire. It says it clearly in the Quran. Shirk is the only thing that will never be forgiven. So you're actually dooming yourself to go to hell. Okay? So shirk is the number one lesson. The other one is patience. In the end, you will succeed with patience. Okay? Which he did. Okay? Any more lessons? What goes around comes around for the disbelieving people. That's another moral. Anything else you can think of? Against uh, arrogance and pride. Good. Arrogance and pride. Where did that lead to them in the end? They were rich, high and mighty, but better than you. You're poor. We're not going to follow your religion because that's a religion of the poor. What happened to them in the end? They were wishing they would be on the boat. Okay? The other moral I touched on earlier, which I think is very important here because a lot of people struggle with the conflict with their families who are religion. They're religious and the others are not. And it tells you clearly in them, forget about them. You need to be good. Carry on with your own religion. Okay? Right. Um, before we do question and answer, I have got sheets here um, with a summary of the story with 
question and answer session as well. That's like your quiz in a way. And for the children, I've got colouring in sheets as well because I used to teach in the madrasa in Rockford and I did it in those days. So you can all come to the front later and get those. Um, and the winner of the quiz is... Drum roll please everybody. Come to the front side then. You have done very, very well. And I'm going to give you this and then we're going to do question and answers. Well done. Let's give her a big... Well done.
but it's spinning quicker and this is why towards the end of the world they say that the uh, days will go by like hours and the hours will go by like minutes and the minutes will go by like seconds. So that's what's happening at the moment. So in those days we do know that the days were longer, it's a longer period of time. Okay, right, uh, let's have some more questions because now's your only chance. Okay, Sashna. No, sorry. I was going to ask about the height of um, the prophet. My mum used to say they were taller back then, and I didn't believe so. I don't yes. know where she got all this knowledge from. Yeah, they were very, very big, and if some of you have been to Jordan or um, Palestine, this is Palestine, yeah. and you've seen the grave, did you see the big coffin of um, Ibrahim and Islam? It was massive, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely massive, and that was a good generations after Hazrat Nuhal okay. So uh, we definitely know they were bigger, and we know that already, because uh, Adam and Islam came straight from Jannah, and everything's so big there, okay. And when we go back to Jannah, if we get there, if you don't all stop doing your shirk businesses, <laughs> then because that's the only entrance to paradise will be if you stop your shirks, then we will be big as well. 40 cubits high, I think it is. That's in my Jannah lecture. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so you said um, is, uh, length was a, a man-sized cubit, but it sounds, it sounds like the ark was quite small, which was 30, meter, 30 you know, cubit meters high, whatever it is. But the cubits at that time might have been very big yeah. because the man was so man big. Was big. Oh. So his cubit was <laughs> basically yeah. Do you understand? You yeah. have to think about these yeah. things. It makes Men sense. were bigger, so the cube in yeah. their arm oh. tip from there to there was big as well, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your jacket is gone because we're about to come on. I have one more yes. question. Uh, I believe that uh, Prophet uh, no lived for 950 years, 950 years. That's and how much he preached for. Or preached for. We don't know how long he lived for. Okay. Because he didn't start preaching when he was a baby. He started right. preaching from approximately 40 years old, actually. Right. 40 is the age of when the prophets start preaching. So if we add that on to the 950, so he was about 1,000 years so old. So he lived about 990 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah, day. yeah. Okay, I've already thought about that answer because I knew it was going to come up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, when you say shirk, it's going to lead to hellfire. Yes. Uh, the Christians, the Hindus, and the Buddhists, and all the others, uh, what does the Quran say about them? Regardless of whatever they, uh, what, you know, whatever they believe is, they're not entering. It doesn't mention Christians will go to hellfire, Jews will go to hellfire, it just mentions shirk. So whoever does shirk will go to hellfire, there will be no way out. Yeah? Okay? Right. Anybody else? Any more questions? And this is my YouTube channel. Um, there's a lot of new people here today, so uh, do subscribe. It's free to subscribe, and it just means whenever I upload a video, you can watch it. And all the previous prophets, a lot of them, Adam's stories on there, Ibrahim's stories on there, and you can all watch it. Okay, so it's there. That's why I put that up there, and we're just going to finish up with some closing remarks now. Um, it's been a very, very um, comprehensive talk today, and everybody's had an interactive uh, time here, and the comments were very good and questions were very good. <coughs> the talk was very complete and comprehensive, so I learned a lot. I fired my few questions, and I learned a lot. Very interesting. Refreshed my knowledge, so hopefully it'll go into my long-term memory. And I'd like to thank our speaker for all the research and all the efforts you've made. And we'll show a hand, give her a hand for appreciation. Thank you very much. That's okay. Uh, the notes are all here with the answers. And um, the coming in sheets are here for anybody who wants them. First come, first serve. Okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Um, if some of you want to come to future lectures, you need to come and see me so that I can take your phone number and then I can WhatsApp you.